The first thing people say to me when I tell them about my trip to Ecuador is, why? Why Ecuador? What's so special about Ecuador? Admittedly, I didn't really know much about the place, but on the 16th of April, a 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit. I called up my friend Lydia and I said, what the hell, let's go to Ecuador. I'm quite embarrassed to say, but I've never been even outside of Europe, so I didn't really know what to expect. To be honest, I thought we were gonna die. The thought did cross my mind, but it was gonna be cheap. It was gonna be cheerful. And most importantly, it was going to be an adventure. We had really jam-packed itinerary because two weeks to get around quite a large country and quite a lot of different terrains was difficult and we started to plan our trip well in advance, yeah, about three days before. <laughs> we have arrived in Panama after a long ass flight. On days like this, there's nothing better to do than just hang about. We have just touched down in Quito and I can already tell that we're gonna like this place. I think my favorite city was Quito, out of all the cities. Quito is Ecuador's capital city and stands at a whopping 2,850 metres above sea level. Stepping into it was like stepping into a giant amphitheatre with civilization looming around you everywhere you looked. It was a really pretty city. We went for dinner and watched all the lights in all the houses coming on one by one. It was really, really nice. Okay, so it's day two in Quito. Me and Lydia have woken up at the crack of dawn. It actually did start getting light only at seven. <laughs> Quito is split into two main parts. You've got the old town and you've got the new town, also known as La Mariscal. We were staying in the old town. So Lid, what's the plan for today then? We're gonna do a tour of the old town today and start at Plaza Grande and end at Parque La Alemada. It's a four hour walk. <laughs> So a little boy just approached me, asking me if he could polish my shoes. We are on our way to the Basilica right now, and literally all these hills, it's a pilgrimage. It's a pilgrimage. <laughs> so here we are at the Basilica del Voto Nacional. Let's go climb some steps. I'm not going to lie. I've been on a lot safer steps. Please God help me. <laughs> Currently at the top of the basilica. It's pretty high. I don't think Lydia's gonna make it. I'm not moving. <laughs> Come on, Lids, you can do it. <laughs> right now I need to go in the gift shop. Before we went to Ecuador, I made a point that I really wanted to go to Mitad del Mundo, which translates as middle of the world. It's basically the equator. I'd already been to the equator, so selfishly, I told Lydia that I didn't want to go. It didn't go down well. So I storm off down the road, pretending I've got other things to do, as you do <laughs> in the middle of Quito. So I'm just like, fuck it. I'll hail a cab and go alone. I'm pretty sure Laura wouldn't get in and go to Matad without me. But oh no, Laura's got in the cab. So I have to go running back to the cab and swallow my pride, basically. Cheers! <laughs> so it's our last day in Quito and we're currently on our way to Matad del Mundo. We all know the real reason why we're going. It's because Lydia misses her northern roots. I miss the northern hemisphere. <laughs> yeah, she's homesick. Matad was a very peculiar little place that slightly resembled Disneyland's Epcot. Despite not being overly invested in going there, it was a great place to visit on our last day in Quito. The main way to get around Ecuador is via an exceedingly bumpy coach journey. We are currently on the bus to Lago Agrio ready for our jungle experience. Liz? We're going on an overnight bus. Or overnight so. bus. A little bit pissed. What should have took us eight hours to get to the jungle on a coach actually took us in excess of 12 hours. It's nine o'clock in the morning. We should have got there at six o'clock. <laughs> Not only this, haven't slept. We're late for the meeting and there's a fucking screaming infant 
right here because we're making this journey a living hell. Laura actually cried when she realised we might not make our our car to get into the jungle. I think I handled it quite well. It turned out that everybody was late for the meeting because of landslides that had blocked the road during the night. To say I felt like a bit of a dickhead was a massive understatement. After a gruelling 12 hours, we arrived in Lago Agrio and then was immediately driven to a boat that would take us to Jammu Lodge. Jammu Lodge was an eco lodge. We have just arrived in Jammu Lodge and it is amazing, look at this. Moist is a very overused, often wrongly abused word. The Amazon is, however, the most moist place I have ever visited. I can honestly say that I feel like I'm never ever going to be dry again. Nobody told me that the Amazon was going to be this wet. Laura, it's a rainforest. By 6pm we were back on the river. In no time at all we had spotted an abundance of monkeys and the rubbery back of a pink river dolphin. So I want to know how to get a cappuccino monkey through customs. We saw everything, including pink river dolphins, and we almost saw them every day, and they're meant to be really rare, so I was pretty pleased with that. <laughs> Hi, say hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are just going on a jungle walk this morning. First time walking in the Amazon, Liz, how do you feel? We're about to go and get fitted out with some sweet rubber boots. <laughs> the Amazon was an entirely different place in the sunlight. The trees erupted with birds as we made our way down Cubeno River to visit the shaman. So hopefully I get beaten by the stick of the shaman. Our little tour guide called out to him using their sort of language. Two little children made noises back. <laughs> Basically meant, Dad's not in. <laughs> so the shaman wasn't home. Not gonna lie, it was a bit of a shaman. However, our tour guide decided to take on the role. Bless him. A tradition in the Amazon is to colour one's skin with an achiotti fruit. It's not a dick, is it? <laughs> I had the advantage of seeing what he did to Laura first and then decided I wanted a little bit less. We are just walking through a town in the Amazon. I'm not going to lie, I'm feeling a little bit self-conscious. We went to the Siona community. It was a lot more developed than I would have thought. They were wearing clothes. <laughs> was you disappointed? I was disappointed. I wanted to see some authentic. Yucca is a popular root vegetable grown in South America. A lady from the community took us through the vigorous process of preparing the yucca bread, which to me felt like a lot of effort for essentially just a burrito. Laura went for a swim at every opportunity in the river. I was a bit more reserved, knowing that there were electric eels, piranhas, caiman in the water with us. So on the last opportunity, I jumped in and got straight back out. <laughs> okay, I've swam in the Amazon, so that's, I'm pleased with that. After four days in the tranquil isolation of our rainforest bubble, we set out to make our way back to civilization and Wi-Fi, with a few obstacles along the way. This gridlock is worse than the M25 at rush hour. <laughs> Literally, look at it. <laughs> One plane and a coach journey later, we arrived in Latacunga. We turned up, we looked like bedraggled, little rats that had come, literally just come out of the jungle. All our clothes were wet. Might get my clothes out of this sodden bag. We must have smelt like a swamp. We were in need of some serious retail therapy. So we're just about to enter one of Latakunga's closed markets. You never know, maybe I'll find myself another pair of these dazzling trousers. Note to self, a closed market is actually very different from a clothes market. I mean, you've got to admire the entrepreneurship. So what do you do for a living? 
sell ropes. The reason for our short stay in Latakunga was thankfully not for the shopping, but because Latakunga provides the best access to the Kiltoa Loop, home to a three kilometer wide crater lake, Laguna Kiltoa. Okay, so we have arrived at the Kiltoa Crater Lake. And look at it, literally look at it. It was just stunning. I've never seen anything like that as a brummie. <laughs> as beautiful as it was, it was really steep. Well, it's not like you're gonna fall far if you do slip. No, Lid, just into the crater. You know when you see those like adverts at Christmas with the donkeys with the like exhausted back legs? That's that's what it felt walking up and down that crater. Lid, ask me who my favourite rapper is. Who's your favourite rapper? Tyler the Creator. <laughs> Very creative, Laura. You haven't been to South America if you haven't added the word gringo to your vocabulary. And there was no place more profoundly gringo than our next destination. My favourite place that I visited, hands down, was Banyos. It was basically backpackers heaven. There was hot springs, zip lines, everywhere you looked. Organic vegan shit. I mean, there was even a homebrew pub. Hi, Jason. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm a sucker for gentrification. I'd read about Banyos and its reputation for having some pretty spectacular shit your pants white water rafting. So immediately I was like, sign me and Lydia up right now. Since we'd done the door door in last year, I thought, well, how bad can it be? It was bad. Within minutes, we'd hit a particularly bad patch of white water. The guide was just screaming at us to paddle. At which point I sort of had to cross my legs because I felt like I was gonna wet myself. This huge wave just starts towering over us. Basically, it was a wall of water. And that was it, the boat just got wiped out. It felt like we were underwater for 20 minutes. I remember him saying to look for a pocket of air, but literally we were just being bobbed back down. I thought we was gonna die. <laughs> Laura turned to me and said, I'm scared. And if Laura's scared, <laughs> then it's a scary situation. <laughs> Eventually we was rescued, but I mean, I'm still shaking. I had no idea that that's how hard it would be. But great experience, really good experience. We returned to Banyos just after lunchtime, in desperate need of an alcoholic beverage. Moonshine! <laughs> it was really nice, actually. I've never had moonshine before because I'm not an American. Or you're not a prisoner. And I'm, I'm also not a prisoner. Explain what you're about to do. With sound. I'm about to go full Stone Cold Steve Austin on this treehouse. So American. <laughs> Before we bid a fond farewell to Banyos, there was one thing left on our agenda. Pylon. 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 P-A-I. Today, we visited one of the many waterfalls what was it called, Lydia? Pylon del Diablo. Pylon del Diablo. The most angry waterfall I've ever seen. It was on par with the British summertime. <laughs> Our last destination was Cuenca a laid-back colonial city in the southern Andes. We took the overnight bus. Lid, you really missed the opportunity to sit in by the window. I feel like Cuenca was basically where quirky American artists go to die. OK, so we are just heading to the archaeological park to go to a museum called Puma Pungo, where I hear they've got shrunken heads. Now, I'm not an advocate for shrunken heads, like what people decide to hang on their car keys is entirely up to them. But if I was given the opportunity to shrink somebody's head, whose head would I shrink? Um, I would shrink Donald Trump's head. Or maybe, oh no, I'd feel really bad shrinking Boris Johnson's. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, I don't like it. That's rock and roll. 
We spent the last few days of our trip eating plantain, exploring the city, feeling less than impressed by Inca ruins, Inca fail, am I right? <laughs> and cheersing room temperature beers while sharing stories about what quite possibly had been our favourite adventure thus far. Lid, do you want to go home? No. No. I think I'll always have a soft spot for Ecuador. I'd recommend it to anyone, but not someone who gets tired easily or doesn't like avocados, bananas, buses, incredible views, ponchos, women in Federer hats. You just wouldn't like it. It's given me the travel bug. I just want to travel to strange places. <laughs> I feel enriched. I don't know what postcard I want. You're going to start a blog? Nah. Then <laughs> you're not that enriched. Shut up. <laughs> if someone was to ask me now why Ecuador, I'd probably simply say, why not Ecuador? <laughs>